Hey everybody, and thank you to everyone that has started watching the tutorial videos online, either on YouTube or on my blog, Katie Threads at WordPress.com. And please subscribe and comment on all of those awesome things. I've already gotten some emails and Facebook messages asking me some questions, so I want to start off by answering the questions that you guys have thrown out there to me already. First question is, what is the difference between a hand sewing needle and a sewing machine needle? This, sorry my nose is itchy, is actually really easy to explain. Here is the hand sewing needle that I showed to you guys before. It has the eye of the needle where you pass the thread through at the opposite end from the point, the part that pierces the fabric. The sewing machine needle, the eye of the needle is actually at the same end as the point that pierces the fabric. Put up even closer. I'm so sorry that you guys can't really see this, but essentially, you know what I'm saying. And then at the opposite end of the needle, there's actually a wider, flatter shaped metal point. And that is actually what's going to get inserted into the sewing machine. So this is fatter on the top so that it can hold this in place and go up and down and stitch through the fabric. And I'll show you guys the two of these side by side. Oops, you can see. Here are our two needles. Difference between hand sewing needle and sewing machine needle. And also the way that they're packaged and marketed is different. Um, for instance, sewing machine needles or I'm sorry, hand sewing needles, as I already showed you, generally come in packages like this, I believe. Um, the multi-packs come in their own little self-contained and organized HACCP, and they tell you what the different needles are for. Sewing machine needles generally either come in a package that looks like this. This is a Schmetz package. And if you look up close, this is a multi-pack, actually, and it has some universal needles, a jeans needle and a stretch needle. And these are actually the basic sewing machine needles that every seamstress ought to have with her sewing machine. Chances are if you purchase a machine, you're going to get a multi-pack that's something like this. And all of these numbers along here are the sizes of the different needles. And then the names are up at the top. Or if you do a lot of heavy sewing and a lot of embroidery, they also come in like a little match case type thing. This is from Schmetz. And I think this probably was about $30 um, because there are 100 number 80 universal needles, or at least there were in here. And this is a nice hard plastic case that's great for keeping those sewing machine needles in. And then of course, whenever you're done with all the needles, there's countless uses for a plastic matchbox case. So that's the difference between hand sewing needles and sewing machine needles. Next question, someone said, what are pinking shears? Pinking shears, here you go. Chances are everybody used these in art class at school at one time or another. These are the shears that cut zigzags. Now these are heavy duty pinking shears that are meant for fabric. The pinking shears that you see in scrapbook and office supply stores that often have plastic handles and maybe a lot of different shapes in the blades that you can cut, I think those are just referred to as decorative scissors. So for fabric purposes, we're just going to call these pinking shears. These are not necessary for you to have. The reason that you have pinking shears is that theoretically, when you cut along your fabric in this zigzag fashion, it helps to prevent the edges of your fabric from fraying. It helps prevent those fibers from cutting loose, um, or fringing loose, so to speak. That's a nice theory. It doesn't really work. Mostly, I find it's just a decorative way to finish the edge on something. Every once in a while, it gives it kind of a cute, quirky little look. 
So not a necessity, but kind of fun to have. Mine aren't very sharp because I use them on paper and on fabric, which brings me to another point that I didn't mention before. Please, 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 whatever you do, with the exception of pattern paper that you must cut through in order to cut your fabric, never use your good fabric scissors on paper or on anything else. You will dull your scissors in no time. You might have to teach husband, friends, children, parents, cleaning ladies, whomever, do not use the fabric shears on paper. You might even be tempted whenever you're trying to cut a piece of paper to just grab these fabric scissors because they're your favorites and they're so sharp and you know exactly where they are. Don't do it. Keep a pair of cheapo scissors in your sewing room. Mark them with a ribbon or something on the handle so that it's really obvious to everyone that these are only to be used for paper and these are only to be used for fabric. Very important thing to take care of your sewing tools, taking care of your scissors. Next question, and this was a good one and something I actually was going to mention. The thimble. For hand sewing in particular, don't you need a thimble? Yes, or at least you need something to protect your sewing finger. Opposed to popular thought, a thimble is not to protect your finger just in case it should happen to get pierced by the needle while you're sewing. If that were the case, then you would need little metal hats on every single finger, which would be all 10 fingers. But anyway, no, one thimble for your sewing finger. You are going to put the thimble on whichever finger is going to be pushing the end of the needle through the fabric and you use this thimble because if you're just pushing this through your fabric, it's really going to hurt over time. Sometimes if you're holding it using your pincer grasp like this, that works for you, but generally you're using another one of your fingers to kind of hold and control the end of this needle. And even though this is not where the point is, this really digs into your skin. And because it's hurting you, you have less control and you're not able to make as nice of a stitch. So that's why you only need one thimble. Personally, um, I care for the thimbles that have a flat top. And if you look, you can see there's also a little groove around the top of this thimble. And that also helps give you kind of a better grip on the needle. The sides are also grooved for some traction so that you can either use the top of your finger like this to move your needle up and down, or you can use the side of your finger to push things through or move it up and down or however you learn to like to do your hand sewing. I have really little fingers and so thimbles never fit me. So what I started doing, very easy, was just taking a band-aid and putting it on my finger and then putting it in the thimble. I tried to line my thimble with a band-aid and with masking tape once and it just didn't work. So don't do that. I had a gold thimble and it was really nice, but definitely not a necessary thing. This is just a dritz thing. You can find these anywhere. Most of those dumb sewing kits that you can buy for like $9.99 around the gift section of the fabric store at Christmas time will include a thimble. If these aren't on the regular notions wall, then go and look in the quilting section. And they might even refer to this as a quilter's thimble because it has this groove around the top. If you don't have a thimble and you have everything else and you're ready to get hand sewing, then a good substitute for a thimble, since all you need to do is protect your finger from getting pierced by the end, is the band-aid trick. Just make sure that all of the stickiness is facing in so it doesn't stick to your fabric. Or there's always good old duct tape. Wrap some Kleenex or a paper towel around the end of your finger, duct tape that, and there you go. MacGyver just made a thimble. Thank you guys so much for watching and please keep on commenting and subscribing and leaving your questions for me and stay tuned because I'm getting ready to do the next tutorial because you guys are just so hungry for all of this information and I'm having a lot of fun. Bye!